Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, good to be with you. Uh, uh, great, grateful to be with you this morning uh, on this uh, Thursday, Thursday morning. Uh, a little bit cloudy out today, uh, but uh, looks like a good day. We'll wait for a few folks to jump on. I'm getting my Bible ready. Uh, we're in the last day of James. James is the brother of Jesus. Uh, James is uh, Israelite, a Hebrew, uh, morning, Lou, morning, uh, Tom and Michelle. Um, and he thinks in a different kind of way, um, uh, which I appreciate uh, what, what James has to say here. Um, hi, Deb. Good morning to you. Uh, I'm just trying to get things all shut here. All right, let's see. We got six people on this morning. Good to be with you guys this morning on a Thursday morning. Uh, hopefully, we've got phone people going. Uh, looks like it, uh, from what I can gather there. And I've got some folks on who are with us this morning on YouTube as well. Let me see what happens. I'm going to try something. Ooh, okay. Um, just seeing what all is going on here. Morning, Bertie. All right. Uh, so we're going to finish up the book of James this morning. A really important section of, of James. Um, as he prays for, or calls us to be people who pray. <laughs> and pray for unity. Because you see, we have a God who seeks to you unite. Uh, that is what he longs to do. When sin and Satan and death divide, right? Uh, we've, we've looked at that verse from uh, John 10.10 10, where Jesus says the thief comes only to steal and to kill and destroy. I, may have, I, may, I have come that you may have life and have it abundantly. Uh, and so uh, we live in a world divided. Um, you know that, I know that. Uh, we see that division all around us. Uh, we experience that division in our own uh, families, in our own lives. Um, uh, even in our own bodies, there's that, that division, that sin, what, that, that which sin causes for our bodies uh, not even to work the way they are supposed to work. And so we, we live in this place of, of division, and it seems to overtake us. Uh, I know it, it weighs us down <laughs> um, as, as we experience it, as we feel it. Um, and yet, uh, today we're reminded um, that we in Christ are, are united. Um, that he seeks to unite and restore. And our verses for today really kind of focus on that. Um, the first is a story about, about a woman named Ruth. You may know that story from the Old Testament. Um, Ruth becomes, uh, in the history of... Uh, She's a foreigner, an outsider, uh, and yet God brings her into the family, uh, makes her a part of the family, and um, she, she recognizes uh, the importance of, of unity. Um, and the story is a, is, is a little bit uh, intricate or a little bit, you got to kind of read it, um, but uh, Ruth ends up staying with her, her mother-in-law, or her brothers, her husbands have died, and so she stays with her mother-in-law, uh, recognizing that there is unity, um, unity in this, in this relationship, and unity with, with, her, with, 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 her, with God. Uh, and so here are the words from Ruth 1.16. Ruth said, Do not press me to leave you or turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God my God. Um, and it's in this statement of unity um, and not division that God really works, uh, because Ruth becomes actually the great-grandmother of David, King David, uh, through whom uh, the King of Kings, Jesus, comes, the Messiah. Um, but she seeks unity and not division. Um, and uh, recognizes the, the real value and power in that. And then 
Paul writes about this in Galatians, Galatians 3.28. He says, there is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male or female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. You see, we, are, we find our unity, that which brings us together uh, in Christ. Uh, Christ came uh, to seek and to save the lost, to bring those uh, who were uh, far from God close to God, to unite, to restore. And that, that's a pathway then for us to live in this unity, um, even in a world of vision. And it's, it's, not, it's, it's, not, it's not easy to live in that in, that, in a world of, of division where we see it and experience it on a day-in and day-out basis. And so as we turn to the book of James, uh, really James is calling us to pray uh, for for unity, uh, you know, when we find and experience this division in our relationships, uh, when we find this division inside of ourselves uh, in, in a physical sense, uh, James says, pray. Uh, pray that, that God would work through this to bring about unity. Um, and I think this is, you know, a, a kind of an interesting point uh, when we talk about praying for miracles, because it seems like we pray and pray and sometimes nothing ever happens. Uh, we pray for healing and it doesn't come. Now, we believe that God can work miracles. Um, we certainly believe that, but we don't always see it uh, in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in the way that, that we want to see it. Uh, but we, tr we trust that God is always working for our good. And so there's this kind of struggle there, I guess you could say. We know God wants good for our lives. We don't always see it, but we know God can, can do it. And so kind of what's helped me is that God's always at work, kind of putting these two together. God is always at work. He's always at work for our good. And sometimes he allows us to see that happen. Sometimes he allows us in. Uh, but it's, it's, really, uh, it's, it's really a matter of trusting that God has good in store for us, and that God is at, at work. And putting those two together, sometimes, sometimes the two come together and we get to see that happening uh, before our very eyes. And that's really what, what James is, is talking about here, um, is that for us to be people of, of, of prayer, to, asking for faith, to trust that, that, that God is working for, for our good. And then Sometimes even asking him for him to let us in on what he's doing so that we can see and experience it fully. Uh, even as we wait to experience it fully in heaven. So here's what, here's what James says. This is as he closes his, his letter. Uh, James, in many ways, is like the book of Proverbs in the New Testament. He's giving us words of wisdom, words of advice, and how to, how to live as, as believers. Again, he's writing to a Jewish audience. They would have understand, understood what, what he was really focused on, really what he was talking about. It would have made sense to their ears. Um, you know, I know Luther had some issues with the book of James uh, when he talks about faith. Uh, you know, faith and actions, the two are, need to go hand in, in hand. And sometimes Luther's concern, because he had grown up in it, was it was all about works. That's what saved you. And Luther said, no, it's not my works. We're saved by grace through faith, but great those who live by by grace through faith also reveal that in our works and the things that we do. You can't have one without the other. Uh, and for the Jewish mind, uh, faith was not just a passive kind of act. I've got faith, and I'll just kind of sit back. Pa faith was it was an active event uh, that that God gave me the ability to believe, and I'm going to put that belief into into action. That's kind of the the Jewish mindset uh, when they talked about faith. Not something passive, but something active. And sometimes I think for us today, faith is this passive thing. Well, God gave me faith, and I'll just sit back and take it, which is a good thing, but it also has to be connected with an action. And so here's this idea of, of praying in, in faith, at trusting that God is at work and God wants good for us. So if any one of you is in trouble, this is from James chapter 5, verse 13. James 5.13. If any of you is in trouble, well, uh, <laughs> raise your hand if you're not. <laughs> I think we all, in our day in and day out, 
come stumble on some trouble. If any of you is in trouble, they should pray. <laughs> is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is any of you sick? He should call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the person, sick person well. The Lord will raise him up. If he has sinned, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Elijah was a man just like us. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain. And it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again, he prayed, and the heavens gave rain and the earth produced crops. My brothers and sisters, if one of you should wander from the truth and someone should bring him back, remember this, whoever turns a sinner from the error of his ways will save them from death and cover over a multitude of sins. So we seek unity. Really, that's what, what James is calling us, to be united to, to Christ, to be united to one another. For, uh, for it's in Christ uh, that we experience this, this healing that we all so long for. And some of us will experience that physically in this world right now, uh, but ultimately we'll experience a healing of our, of our soul uh, in this time and in the time to come. Uh, we live in this now, not yet, as, as believers in Christ. We're experiencing healing and fullness now, but not fully and completely. That won't happen until we get to heaven. Uh, and so we live in this, in this tension, if you will, uh, that God is at work, and we're praying for God to be at work, and, and sometimes he allows us in on what he is doing. He allowed Elijah in on it. Um, and he allows us in on it at times as well uh, to see that, that, that miraculous thing, uh, thing happen. But ultimately, uh, we see that miraculous thing happen uh, as, as we are united uh, to our Heavenly Father through, uh, through Jesus Christ. And so we seek to be people of prayer. Uh, James says the, the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. God hears our prayer. Uh, God answers our prayer. Now, he answers it in his way, his time. We know that it's for our good. Uh, and sometimes he, he lets us in on what he's doing, and we're grateful for those, those times. And those other times he doesn't, we trust in his will and know that is good, that he has come that we may have life and have it abundantly. Not divided, uh, but united uh, in, in Christ so that we can be united with with one another. Uh, in our prayers for today, I, I saw a prayer for uh, one of Lou's friends. Um, uh, she's decided to come off hospice care, so we pray for her. Uh, pray for Joe Grish. Joe is uh, struggling. Uh, he's over at Burgess Square Rehab Center. Does not want to be there. Wants to leave. Um, is kind of being stubborn. And uh, just for his good, I know it stinks being in that place. Um, literally and figuratively, uh, but uh, in the long run, I think it would be better for him to stay. So uh, pray pray for that. Pray for, for Joe to be willing to listen to his doctors and his nurses and uh, take that advice and, and strengthen his, his, legs, his legs so that he can uh, get back home again. Uh, so uh, let me pray. Uh, Father, today we are grateful that we have been made home a part of the family of God, that we are united to you through Jesus Christ, and as a result of that, we are united uh, to one another. Uh, Lord, um, we live in a world that is divided, and yet we seek reconciliation. Uh, we pray for reconciliation, Lord, uh, both in relationships uh, with you and, and reconciliation in, in our physical being, both spiritual and physical. Uh, that it would lead us in a pathway to reconciliation with, uh, with others, uh, Lord, because that's, that's who we are. Uh, we, we are one in Christ. There is no slave or free, Jew or Greek, male or female. We are one in you, uh, Jesus. 
and we want to seek uh, to live in that that unity even as we share that unity and so we pray for that today in a world that is divided and we pray that would start with with us that we would bring healing to our world even as you bring healing to us lord um and and we just we just ask lord uh for for that uh today Um, we know lord that that our bodies will wear and tear and they fall apart and they're not going to last forever they are not eternal um and that that one day we will be fully restored Uh, until that day lord as we deal with the 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 reality of of living in a broken world um, we pray for healing and restoration for our bodies Um, we we pray for healing and restoration in our body in the body of, of of christ the church uh, and we pray for healing and restoration in in our world, Lord. And let it start with us. Uh, even as we 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 look forward uh, to that full and complete unity and restoration uh, with you in heaven, for you are the one who has made things right, Lord. We can't do it on our own, but you have done it for us, and so we seek to follow uh, Jesus's lead on this. And we pray for that. Um, we pray for it uh, today. Even as we, we pray for those we care about and love, uh, for Lou's friend who's coming off the hospice, and uh, recognizing, uh, Lord, um, that, uh, that these bodies don't last forever. Um, we're grateful our souls do, but our bodies don't. They're a shell for our soul. and They'll, they'll fall apart uh, with age. Um, we're, we just pray for peace for Lou's friend. Uh, she, she comes to grips with this and and yet recognize and celebrate what is to come uh, as we all have that hope and that promise uh, pray for joe today lord uh, just give him peace inside uh, bring him healing on the outside uh, help him to to know and do what is best for him and for his family uh, even if it means uh, some some hard days now um, just so he can begin that that process of healing um, just make a way for him in these these days as his body deteriorates uh his mind is still sharp and active and he wants to to really um, <laughs> participate in in the body of christ um, and it, it's 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 hard to see uh, when he wants to do so much and yet his body won't allow him uh, but let him know he's valued and, uh, has great contributions and things he can do, and, and we're thankful for that. Uh, today, we pray for others who are sick, Lord, uh, that you would bring healing. Uh, that is that is your promise, Lord, you want good for us. Um, and Sometimes you bring us in on the miraculous healing. Other times you don't. Uh, but we know, Lord, that you are always working for our good. Uh, and so we pray, uh, healing. We pray, Lord, for unity. Um, unity in in the church uh, that we would be people of reconciliation Uh, unity for those who are far from you lord that they would uh, see their need and and turn to you again and find that healing Uh, we pray for unity in our world today Uh, help us as 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 your people to leave a legacy a lasting legacy of something different uh, as we make a difference in the world today Uh, use us lord we pray uh, in that And for all these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, good to be with you guys uh, today. Um, You have have a great day, and uh, we will see you this weekend. Looking forward uh, to worship. I think uh, Joe and Cindy's grandson, I believe, is to be baptized this weekend. So uh, we pray, just pray for that. That would all happen. Um, All right, you guys. Take care and enjoy the day. <laughs> Looks like a little little different from yesterday. A little cloudy and gray, but enjoy the day the Lord has made. All right, talk to you soon. Bye-bye.